Welcome to a video taking a look at quadratic sequences. In this video we're going to be finding the nth term for quadratic sequences. In order to do this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to start by looking at what uh, the sequence is going up by from term to term. What we can see is that on this between the first term and the second term, we have increased by 12. Then we have increased by 20. Then we have increased by 28. And then from the fourth term to the fifth term, we have increased by 36. Next thing that we then need to do is we need to take a look at what is called the second difference. And what we can see here is that our second difference is 8. The amount that we're increasing by between terms increases by 8 each time. What we take from this second difference, this second difference tells us the coefficient of n squared. So because we have got a second difference, that means that the sequence is a quadratic sequence, which means that we're going to be dealing with n squared. The value of the second difference tells us what our coefficient of n squared will be. And to work that out, all that we have to do is take that second difference and divide it by 2. So what we can say is that the beginning part of our sequence is going to be 4n squared. Now the next thing that we then need to do, because this may not necessarily be the end, we may have other things that we need to add on to 4n squared. So what we are going to do, in order to work this out, is we are going to just write out what the 4n squared sequence would be. Okay, so 4n squared, that would be 4 times 1 squared. That would give me that would give me the first term of the sequence, then 4 times 2 squared, 4 times 3 squared, and so on. So writing out that sequence, what we can say is we can say that the first term is 4. The second term would be 4 times 2 squared, so that would give us 16. Then 4 times 9, 4 times 3 squared, for 36. Then 4 times 16, for 64. And then 4 times 25, for 100. Now what I'm then going to do is I'm going to compare this 4n squared sequence, so 4n squared sequence on its own, with the sequence that I was given originally. So our sequence, negative 1, 11, 31, 59, 95. So what I can see here is that there is a consistent difference between the 4n squared sequence and the sequence that we've got. So to finish off this question of finding the nth term for this sequence, I just need to think about, well, what would I have to do to 4n squared to get to the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth terms of my sequence? And what I can see is that I'm taking away 5. 4 subtract 5 gives me negative 1. 16 subtract 5 gives me 11. So my final answer to this question, find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of the sequence, is going to be 4n squared and then subtract 5. So that gives me my final answer. Now what I can do with my calculator at this point is I can then check to see is this correct. Okay. So the way in which we can do that is we can use the table function on your calculator. So if you go to mode and press table 3 um, and then we can just type in we can just type in the sequence that we've got, 4n squared minus 5. Okay, so 4. And then rather than n, we're going to use uh, the letter x instead. That's just what we need to use on our calculator. So 4x squared minus 5. And then if we press equal, our start, this is our first input number. So that would be the first term, second term, third term. So our start number is 1. The f our n term is going to be 5 because we want up to the fifth term. 
we want up to that fifth term for 95. And then the step is, well, that is simply uh, what we the in, what you want the input to go up by. So one, two, three, four, five. So our step we would say is one because there's the difference of one between one and two and then between two and three and between three and four and so on. This then brings us up a little table and we can see that it tells us the answers for the first term. So our first term for 4n squared minus 5 should be negative 1, and that is exactly what we've got. For the second term, for 4n squared minus 5, that should be 11, and that's what we've got. And we can sc scroll down, minus 1, 11, 31, 59 for the fourth term, and 95 for the fifth term. So we are correct. And like I say, that is just a little check that you can do. You don't have to do that. Um, but obviously, if you've got time in an exam, then it's a good thing that you can do at the end just to check that you're correct. OK, let's take a look at a second and third example. Here's our second example. Um, again, start by looking at the difference that we're going up by each time. Here, I'm going up by 11 then by 17, then by 23, and then by uh, 29. Second difference we can see nice and clearly is that we're going up by 6 each time. So that second difference tells us that it's going to be n squared, and it tells us that it's going to be 3n squared. So remembering that the coefficient of n squared, the number that we're going to put in front, is just half of the second difference. Then we write out the 3n squared um, sequence. What would 3n squared on its own be? So one, uh, 3 times 1 squared would give me 3. Then 3 times 2 squared, 3 times 4, would give me 12, 3 times 9 for 27, 3 times 16 for 48, and then 3 times 25 for 75. Next step is to write out this sequence underneath. So writing this sequence out underneath, and then comparing what we have got for our sequence to what the sequence for 3n squared is. So on this first one, what we can see is that the 3n squared, to get from 3n squared to our sequence, we would have to subtract 3. To get from 3n squared to the second number in our sequence, the second term in our sequence, we're going to have to subtract 1. Then we're going to have to add 1. Then we would have to add 3. And then we would have to add 5. So what we can see is actually there is a second sequence in the sequence that we've got. So what we then do is we then think about linear sequences and linear nth term. So what I can see here is that the secondary sequence is increasing by 2 each time. And so what I just have to do is I just write down what the nth term would be for this secondary sequence that I've written out. Well, it's increasing by 2 each time. OK, so it's a linear sequence. And so I can say that that means that it is 2n. And then what am I having to do to 2n? So that's the 2 times table. So 2 times 1, 2 times 2, and so on. What am I having to do to get to the numbers in my sequence? So if I think about this, negative 3 is the first term. So 2 times 1, because this is the first term. 2 times 1 would give me 2. And then from that, I would have to subtract 5. On the second term, 2 times 2 would give me 4. Then I would have to subtract 5. So this secondary sequence I could describe as being the sequence 2n minus 5. So all that we then have to do at the end of this is just collect these things together. 3n squared 
and 2n minus 5. And so this sequence is going to be the sequence 3n squared plus 2n squared minus 5. Okay, and we've added 2n squared minus 5 because we've said that that 2n is a positive. So it is, our final answer will be 3n squared plus 2n minus 5. Again, we can just do that small check on our calculator. So the sequence that we have got is 3n squared plus 2n minus 5. Typing that in to our calculator, except replacing the x with uh, replacing the n with x. Start of 1, first term to the fifth term with a step of 1, and that gives us the sequence 0, 11, 28, which is, so, sorry, 0, 11, 28, 51, and 80, and so this answer that we have given is correct. Okay, final example. Slightly trickier one, slightly trickier numbers, but the process is still exactly the same. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start by looking at the difference between each value. Okay, so the difference between each term in the sequence. Here I can see that my difference is negative 1.5. Then the next difference is negative 0.5. The next difference is positive 0 0.5 and then that final difference positive 1.5 my second difference here then is that I am increasing by one each time so my second difference is one so that means the n squared term for our quadratic sequence is going to be half of that second difference, n squared. So we can say that that's 1 divided by 2, so half n squared or 0.5 n squared. It's completely up to you how you want to put that, um, write that down. I know that a lot of my students like to write 0.5 n squared, but I'm going to go with half n squared. Okay, so now let's write out the half n squared sequence. So half times n squared, so for our first term, half times 1 squared will give me 0 0.5. <clears throat> the next term will give me 2. So half times 2 squared, so half of 4. Then half of 9, 4.5. Half of 16 for 8. And then half of 25 for 12.5. Then writing down the sequence that I was given at the beginning underneath so that we can compare the half n squared sequence with the sequence that we've got. So negative 1.5, negative 3, negative 3.5, negative 3, and negative 1.5. And then looking at the difference between them. So what can I see on this first one? I can see that the difference between the half n squared sequence and our sequence is minus 2. Then we're subtracting 5. Then we're subtracting uh, what we've subtracted there, subtracting 8. Uh, then 11. And then 14. So what we can see is again, I've got a linear sequence, which is the difference between half n squared and the sequence that we were given. So I now look at finding what this linear sequence is. What I can see here is that the difference between each term in this secondary sequence is negative 3. So that means it's going to be minus 3n. And then what I then need to do is I need to compare negative 3 uh, with the first term and what I can see is that that's negative 3n plus 1. So a little bit of um, linear nth term confidence would be would be very helpful for this topic um, because obviously when it comes to that linear sequence it's handy to be able to do these very easily. So 
Once I have done that, I now need to put it all together. And I can say that that is this sequence, negative 1.5, negative 3, negative 3.5, will be half n squared. And then negative 3n plus 1. So final answer, half n squared minus 3n plus 1. Okay. What I've set up here is some questions that you can now practice on. So attempt these questions. Um, have a go at them. See if you can follow uh, what's gone before. Um, pause the video now and the answers are coming up shortly. So here are the answers to those questions. Um, hopefully you found this, this useful um, and thank you for watching.